Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Mach-E Vlog. Today we are at the LA Auto Show. We're gonna do a tour of all the EVs, starting with the one behind us. So let's go. This is so cool. This is the 10 uh, Safari Edition. They debuted this at SEMA just a couple of weeks ago. It's sort of based on the, the Mach-E rally that we're gonna to get to in a second, but it's even like up the game even more. I mean, super off-road uh, lights here. There's actually a wrench in the front, uh, and then there's the, the outside part here. Uh, super huge um, fender flares, raised a lot as well. I don't know what they've done with the suspension, but like, off-road tires, the wheels look fantastic. Um, and of course you have like some gear that you wanna keep up here, so they've added that as well. The Maki -E Rally spoiler has been added to it. Uh, more fender flares back here, giant mud flaps. And then of course you have like your off-road e-bike. Oh, and check this out. I didn't notice this the first time that we walked by it. Electrify, show off. And so that was there's uh, another sticker on the front too. So not only did they take it to SEMA, they took it to Electrify Expo. We went to the one in Long Beach. There's uh, several more uh, places being added next year for 2024. Check out Electrify Expo uh, so that you can see a bunch of EVs that are going to be coming and touring the country. They also have e-bikes and a bunch of other like EV enthusiasts. So pretty cool to check that out. We did a complete video on the Mach-E Rally at the Detroit Auto Show. Uh, we have not driven it. It's just, it's coming out in 2024. It's a GT version of the Mach-E up to an off-road rally type uh, edition. So it has the off-road rally looking tires. It's been raised about an inch, I believe. Has the spoiler that I just mentioned that's over there on the Safari edition. Um, it still has Magna Ride suspension, but it also has the GT motors. So it should be very high performance. And it just competed in the Rebel Rally, which is the longest off-road rally in the U.S. And it's completely women. All the teams are, are women. They have to do all the new, uh, navigation uh, without using GPS. So pretty cool. The mach -E came in like fifth in its uh, division, but it's still pretty cool. The, the platform isn't even, you know, fully done and complete. It's coming out in 2024, but they entered it in the Rebel Rally last month. And there's a great video by Miss Go Electric. So if you search uh, Miss Go Electric's channel for Rebel Rally, she did a great video on it. Um, some of the other differences on the lower half, they're going to have some protection for your paint underneath to protect the battery for going off road. There's gonna be a little bit more robust protection for the battery, uh, better tires for doing like off road. It reduces the range from like 260 down to 250 for the, uh, you know, if you're comparing it to like a Mach-E GT. And then up front, it looks pretty much uh, the same, except they changed the grill slightly and they added some fog lights. So that's the Maki -E Rally. This is Glacier Gray. They also have Grabber Blue and what's the other one? The they have Grabber Yellow Grabber, and Eruption Green. Eruption Green and Glacier Gray, from my understanding, are all gonna be available on other trims, but yes. uh, Grabber Yellow is rally only. Yes, and it looks fantastic. Check out that video because it's it looks really good in the video. And then this one is 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 awesome as well. As well, if you just like with the other Maki -E colors, when you go up and look at it closely, it's very good uh, paint quality. Just looks fantastic in the lights, especially the show lights here with the blue floor reflecting reflecting into it as well. Of course, the next exciting Ford electric vehicle that we have to point out is the Lightning. I am in front of the Mega Power Frank. I could be eaten by it right now. This does fit a full-grown human. We found that out when we did a frunk test. Uh, Patrick popped in here. We don't advise you do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, yeah, obviously, things we love about the Lightning. I, I was just going to say, there is like an emergency release button. So oh, very important. When yeah. I was in there, I could have like hit that. But it's still unnerving when that thing that. is closing on you. So don't do it. But don't do it. But like everyone did it when they first got this term view. But it's done now. Don't do it. Okay. Things we really like, there's a drain, there's a whole ton of space. This is just the front and there's so much space. There's power, awesome things. And as we always point out, there's lighting up here. So just makes a great area to keep stuff, work on things. And I wanted to show you some things that I really like about the lightning as a person with a mobility difficulty. So the running board and a grabby. 
I love having a grabby that's so helpful right here. It makes it really easy to get in and out just like that. And if I need to get into the bed, the handle over here makes it really easy too. Woohoo! Nice. That's actually so helpful. And it's not just you have mobility issues. Like it's always been hard for me to like hop up onto the rear tailgate. So it's for everybody. It's for everybody. Getting down was harder than getting up, but I think I would get used to it. I just really love some of those handy little features. All right. We're here at the Kia booth. We're going to show you some of their EV yeah. offerings, but in case you didn't know, you can also get a tour of the LA Auto Show. And this is something that they do at all auto shows, I believe. That is Amelia Dalgard. So you're getting a tour with experts. They're various automotive experts. Um, founder of A Girl's Guide to Cars, Scotty Reese, also gave tours at the New York Auto Show. So that is a super cool thing to do. If you want to learn from experts about all this stuff. All right, on to Kia. Of course, we've got to start with the Kia Nero. Uh, it, they have like the regular, the hybrid, and this is the EV version. It's in the low 40s, um, yeah. decent range. It's, it's not, a lot of people don't consider it like you know, the best Kia offering because they have the EV6 and the EV9, but it's actually a great option. Uh, just check it out, give it a try, see what you think. This is sort of cool. This is like a cutaway version so that you can see the, the EGIP or e electric global modular platform that's in a lot of the Hyundai Motor Group vehicles. So you can see the front motor, the rear motor, and of course the battery. Uh, very common you know, layout with EVs, but it's nice to be able to see it. And then let's walk around onto the other side uh, one of the other EVs that, of course, Kia is uh, getting ready to roll out, and it actually is rolling out, I guess. But this is the uh, EV9. Uh, looks fantastic. It is a three-row SUV. Uh, this is a GT line, which is really neat to see. Looks uh, similar, like, to the EV6 inside. Uh, I love the, the, like, angles on it and, like, the pixelated uh, accents in the headlights. Um, this color looks fantastic, but uh, really excited to see one of these. And I think this is like, I think this, like, uh, I don't know if this is from Magna, but like uh, Magna was telling us like how they get some of these like illuminations that's behind it, like a, a painted uh, front fascia. So looks really sharp here. That's the first time I've actually seen it up close and in person. I really like that. Let's move on. I know there's an EV6 floating around here somewhere. And of course, we can't leave Kia without looking at the EV6. This is a GT. I didn't look at the calipers. I didn't look at the brake calipers. Uh, and, we, and you know because the brake calipers on the GT are like a lime green. It looks kind of interesting with red. It's kind of like oh, Christmas. You can see the, the seats. Oh, Ugh. it is a GT. There's also lime green trim on the inside. Uh, we actually have a video with this. Uh, I think we had really fun costumes in that video too. We, maybe. We but it was, it was like, we love this. It's a fun. really fun car to drive. The range was a, a little bit difficult for us to like get over but otherwise it's so good charges really fast handles great and, and the performance is top notch and very comfortable to the mach -E, honestly like this is probably i feel like the most equal it is very -E. close to the mach -E gt performance edition when you're looking at the ev6 gt uh this probably has more performance the mach -E has more range so pick your poison <laughs> Now we're at Lucid. They had a grand unveiling of the gravity, so this place is getting swarmed. We're going to dive into the swarm. One of the really exciting things that we got to see here at the LA Auto Show was the unveiling of the Lucid Gravity right behind us here. And if you peek back over here, uh, Peter, the founder of uh, Lucid, uh, he was the one that, like, of course, introduced it. He's back there, like, giving tours of it. We may try to hop in and do that, but it's a long line. Everybody's excited. It is a three row luxury. Uh, EV SUV starting at under 80,000. That was sort of surprising yeah, to me. Uh, and up to 440 miles of range, uh, I believe is what they said. And zero to 60 in like three something. Yeah, three yeah. Yeah, it has surprising stats for the price. I don't know about you guys, well, but I was thinking it would start at 100 now. They, they, Lucid has the ability to go from like 80 up very high. So, uh, it depends true. on what the trim levels are, but it, it's still uh, pretty impressive. There is another Lucid here. We're going to uh, go take a look at that. I'll flip around and we'll But they did out. have a whole bunch of cool things about the gravity, like completely adjustable seating. So the rear seats can fit two full adults. 
which is, uh, I, I hear, not that common. I should sit yeah. in the third row seating. Um, yeah. And it can like completely stow, so you can carry a whole bunch of stuff. So it's supposed to be really functional. All right, now let's look. Yeah. Okay, everybody knows the Lucid Air. This is the Sapphire. So amazingly fast car, uh, fastest production car. It's going into production. Uh, I'm like super impressed. We get, we're getting swarmed by people. Uh, so we won't spend too much time on this, but um, typical Lucid with all of the perks that you normally get, except this one, the performance has been up, the suspension has been upped, and uh, just a fantastic car here. So we're gonna get out of here, and go to someplace less crowded. It's not 2024, <laughs> it's 2023. These are the official Times Square numerals, and the reason they're here, I don't know, but <laughs> it's actually being powered by this Kia EV9. Uh, we'll walk back, well, we'll walk around because somebody's filming. We don't want to interrupt them, but uh, Times Square partner. And then back over here, they have the vehicle to load uh, apparatus that plugs into the charge port. And then the cable's going over here and it's powering all of those lights and the numbers. So another little bonus from Kia. I think also this is one of the more inventive things that I've seen powered by a vehicle. So if you've seen something cool, you should leave it in the comments. You gotta know what the best thing is. I like the tastiest thing, which was the Ford lunch at Electri Expo. That's true, crepes. This is not necessarily an EV literally, but it is very EV important. This is EV Go. They always have this booth here at the LA Auto Show and uh, it varies what vehicle they have. And this year they have the Nissan Aria and that's plugged into one of their demo um, chargers right here. So it's cool to see their booth. And actually last year, I think they had a goat because their goat is their mascot. So it was like the EV goat. Um, oh, yeah. And people, there was like news costers doing goat yoga with a goat on them. And so if you see a goat at an auto show, it's because of EV Go. And if you look over here at this map, um, I'm hoping this is literal because this is all their chargers. Yeah, this is all their um, chargers. Let's see what the colors are. And it's really expanding. So we have EV Go. The yellow is... Uh, EV Go. And then there's the roaming partners. Roaming oh, actually, let me, yeah. let me point it out. So uh, these are EV Go. And then the purple are EV Go. What is that? Olivia. And this charger's got my name on it. Ah, oh, that's the, cool. The charger's called Olivia. That's cool. The, so the, the other ones are, are partners. Uh, I think the purple is DC fast charging and the yellow is uh, level two. But yeah, EV Go is going to start filling in some gaps. And I believe like one of the critical ones that's getting ready to be online or maybe is already online is down here. Quartzsite, Arizona. Woo, awesome. Okay, quickly, we're gonna go through this section. This is where the lunch is at, but there's a Silverado EV. There's copyright music, so we're gonna run. The uh, Hyundai Ionic 6. Ionic 6. Super awesome. Uh, and then... Hybrid, hybrid. And then <laughs> <laughs> a Volvo EX30. As you guys know, we did a video on that and Liv has a uh, reservation in on this, but... Um, I'm so excited. More excited than I wish I was, because. I don't want to have to buy a new car right now, but it's so cute. And then I tried to get in a look inside last time. It's really hard to see. It's not open. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it, of course. Hey. Uh, and then uh, an EV9, uh, as well as, this is one of our favorite uh, EVs down here, a Genesis Electrified GV70. We have a video coming on that. And, and I have has an, an article. article for a girl's guide to cars. This was awesome. This was really, really good. Loved it. Spoiler. And right behind Patrick, there's another EV. Hopefully we're going to get a closer look at this soon, uh, but they're doing a press conference in a moment. It's Prosperity Market. It was started by uh, Carmen and Cara. Uh, I think Carmen was a um, makeup artist. Cara was a fashion designer and they created Prosperity Market, which is uh, entirely EV and I believe solar panel sustained too. Yeah, I think the, it's solar panels and then it pa uh, charges up or powers the, the thing. So uh, yeah. We're gonna to try to get more details on that for you. Yeah. So this is a Nikola Trey. It is a hydrogen electric powered semi. Pretty cool to see it out here. Um, they, you know, started off, they had some controversy and some issues, but they're actually on the road and, and using these now. Let's uh, grab this. I'm gonna take a look. I'm not gonna hop in, but you can see the cabin inside. 
Uh, let's see, like, there we go. I'm not, a not doing a great job of showing you. Well, let's take a look around back as well, real quick. Can't see a lot of details. It's, you know, like most EVs, you can't really see what's going on unless you uh, look under the hood. But you can see some of the, like the, the power, uh, the motor back here. And it has been in use at least a little bit. Uh, but anyways, very cool to see Nicola out here. Check out what we have here. A Red Bull Ford Mustang Mach-E. Uh, of course, this isn't like anything other than a wrap, but it's the mark that, the, that Ford and Red Bull are gonna be teaming up to work uh, together in F1 racing coming up in the next couple of years. Lots of information has been out about that, but uh, I love this wrap. I wouldn't mind having a wrap like this. Not that I you know, want a, a, an actual logo Red Bull on here, um, but it looks really sharp seeing the Ford uh, logo with the, the colors uh, bringing, bringing it all together here. Hidden back here, literally behind the auto show, like we didn't even know this was here. This is the living vehicle. This is not just an electric camper. This is a living vehicle. It's like an off-grid sustainable vehicle with solar panels, with water, with all sorts of cool stuff. And we actually did a tour of this at Electrify Expo earlier this year. So you should check that out. But it's really cool to see them here. So uh, if you somehow happen to watch this and are coming to the show, make sure to come out back. We're right here at the entrance of the auto show and an EV that we can't ignore is scooters and mobility devices. So if you come to the auto show, there's a huge variety of options for you to choose from because there's a ton of walking and there is, if you, if you aren't normally in a mobility device and you might need it, don't be afraid to use it. It means that you get to look at cars without pain or discomfort. So super cool that they have a huge variety of stuff, including strollers, it looks like. So yeah, I was gonna say, they even have a stroller, it's not an EV, but. But that's cool, awesome. Yeah. Well, we found the Galpin EV section in the Galpin uh, Customs, but this is a 2024 Polestar 2. I think this probably is one of Liv's favorite colors. I would say so for sure. It's like a Calypso blue or something. Maybe my hair should be this color. I don't know. Maybe maybe that would be a bit rough, but my favorite blue is next to it. That's the Grabber Blue Maki. That's a GT. GT with some custom wheels. You can't really see it, but there's also a custom stripe. We're not going down there because I don't music. know if you can tell, there's loud, loud music. Really loud. Uh, and uh, then next to that is a Volvo C40. So you know both of those. Uh, I just like this this one here. This is really cool. I love it. Once again, this is an EV adjacent thing. This is Y-Tricity. They have an amazing wrapped Mach-E here. Y-Tricity are leaders in wireless charging. We actually got to see them at the Detroit Auto Show a couple of years ago. Um, and we didn't manage to get um, out to see their actual unit being used, but They've got a lot of stuff here and it's super cool tech. Yeah, pretty much you're not gonna have to plug your car in in the future. This is the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. If you know Hyundai, you know like the end line on all their cars is like the, the top end uh, performance wise. And this is no exception. It, it looks fantastic. I love this light blue color with like the orange accents. There's orange brake calipers, the orange line down at the bottom. Uh, but it, it is actually, they do boost up the performance and suspension on this. Uh, really tunable as well. So like if you are into performance driving, this is the Ionic 5 that you'll want to get. And just hopping into it, the seats are just really bolstered. Um, you have like a, some extra controls here, like a boost button, just like you do with like some of the other E-Gimp uh, cars. But I'm really excited by this coming to America and hopefully soon on the streets and hopefully we get to test one fairly soon. Well, also right in the entrance is Cadillac and they have one of their lyrics on display. Of course they have some other gas cars, but uh, the lyric is sort of a little bit bigger than the Mach-E, but it looks really nice. Uh, of course it's Cadillac, so you have a little bit more, you know, luxury feel to this. I really like the, the interior. It's very open down here. The screen is uh, it's just horizontal thing. so. I do like the vertical screen that, that we have in our Mach-E. One of the things that we pointed out a couple of times that I really like to adjust the seats, you have these controls here instead of having them on the side of the seat. And this is really similar to the Mercedes EQS. What's really cool about this is that you can stay in the seating position while you're adjusting it. So it feels yeah. really lax to me. Cause it, you know, when it's down here on the side, you know, sometimes you're like looking down and trying to adjust and then 
that's really just nice and easy. I like that, but um, I haven't driven one. We gotta, we gotta see if we can drive one of these. I'm sure we could test drive one. Nice glass roof, nice display here. Everything just feels really good. All the materials feel really nice. And it's a really open footwell for the yeah. driver. So I'm excited by this one. All right, now On let's get into this, the <laughs> other hall. We got stopped by one more thing. This is Verge. They make this uh, super bike. It's a TS Ultra, very cool design. I love this rear wheel design. I've never seen anything like that. Of course, we don't do many uh, motorcycles or anything like that. But it's talking about down here, I can read the stats and act like I do it all. It's like top speed, 124 miles an hour, two and a half seconds, zero to 60, charges in 25 minutes, up to 233 miles of range. And I think this one is about 45,000. Uh, so pricey compared to a car, but where are you gonna get your thrills other than on a motorcycle? <laughs> all right. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Hyundai is one of the sponsors of Disney's 100th year celebration. I can't entirely remember. Patrick, what is it 100 years of? Uh, 100 years of Disney, of Disney as a Disney. company. Of Disney. Patrick noticed this as we are walking by. There are hidden Mickeys in the Psionic 5. Look if you right don't there. see it, let me try to zoom in on it and then you'll sort of see. So there's Mickey Mouse and his ears right there. And, and the wheel design. And there's Disney 100 Platinum Edition. I wasn't expecting this. I'd never gone to Disneyland before, but when we moved to San Diego to the SoCal area, we went for the first time. So I've learned that at Disneyland, there are hidden Mickeys all over. So this Ionic 5 is literally like a Disneyland edition with hidden Mickeys. I wonder if they're inside too. I, we could take a look, but like looking at it like this, I couldn't really see it. But then it's like you move over here and it's like, it's so cool to see like, it, okay, we're we're sort of just geeking out on this. <laughs> we're totally thing, geeking it's out. It's a hidden Mickey. It's really cute. It's really playful. Let's have a little peek inside. Um, this is oh, there they are. Look at the door trim. That's not hidden. That's not hidden. Oh. There's literally like Mickey Mouse door yeah. trim. This beautiful like uh, milk chocolate brown and gray, <laughs> which is an odd color combo that I wouldn't have expected. But I guess it's like the old Disney gold and silver thing. Um, yeah, I think so. It plays into the like logo for Disney 100. I don't know what the cost of this is, uh, but I'm sure there are Disney fans that must lose their mind over this and would be willing to get this. So let's take a peek in the back and see if there's anything special. And this is, of course, an electric vehicle. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely electric. <laughs> I like the sunscreen back here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't see any other hidden Mickeys. We should move on. If you guys aren't Disney fans, you're probably like, I don't care. But um, <laughs> anyways, we'll move on. We are now sandwiched between two of Hyundai's super sweet EVs. To our left or your right, <laughs> we have the Ionic 6. This looks so good. This is our EV sedan. A I'm, lot of people I, don't like it. You were undecided in the beginning. I don't know what my problem. Beginning. No, I like it. I really like it. What do you guys think? Can you see it? The rear me? is interesting. And of course it's flipped up right now. Somebody has a, the hatch uh, it's, open. It's really pretty. It's far more sleek than the Onyx 5, which is right over here. The big chunky SUV that you probably know. And we just <laughs> found the Disney one. One of the things that's really interesting, I'm gonna spin around. I'll try to do it slowly. I'll do it this way because there is an Ionic 5 over here as well. And then the the N is back there somewhere. Uh, but have you seen one of these? This is a Nexo. It's a hydrogen uh, electric vehicle. We've seen a couple of them on the road. They're pretty rare. Um, and of course, hydrogen uh, fuel cell cars are struggling to get the gain in popularity. Toyota has one that I've seen uh, off in the distance that we may like circle around, but uh, I think they're really struggling to, you know, gain traction. And I don't know if they'll ever work, but uh, interesting to see them here. We're here in Nissan. And of course we have to start with the Leaf, one of the longest running EVs. Now this is a big upgrade from the Leaf that we have in our driveway, which is a 2012. This still does have Chatamo though. So I uh, really up to you, but we only charge at home without Leaf, so it's no big deal. And next to us, we have the Aria. We have yet to spend that much time in this, but I think it looks really great. Um, the Aria is CCS currently, but they are uh, committing to using NAX on future models. So that's super awesome. Our friend Lacey with Misco Electric actually helped launch these. So I think we need to spend some time in this because it looks really awesome. This is the Lexus area. So we have a Lexus RZ450E. We did a video on this one. Uh, we had it for like a week, did a complete review, checked out all the driver's assistance features, did some charging with it and all that good stuff. Uh, of course, it's very similar to the Subaru Solterra or the Toyota BZ4X. 
Um, my biggest issue with it was the range. It was under 200 miles of range, fully charged. Does it charge great? Does it, it's not like fast, fast charging, but it's not bad. Uh, it's better than the BZ4X or the Subaru Solterra, but uh, the range, under 200 miles on the, the, the version that we had. Now we're at Genesis and they have a whole bunch of offerings and they obviously have electric and ice version, but this is the G80, their uh, luxury sedan basically. I'm just right here because one, the charge port looks super cool. It, I just love that it's hidden and we actually spent some time in the GV70 and that has the same thing. And this is the vehicle to load thing again. So it's powering the, the display here. And one, oh, it's powering the display. I didn't even notice, that's so cool. Yeah. One quick thing about this charge port though is we did find that uh, bugs get on it. So if you want to close it or whatever, then you're touching bugs. So there's that. But look at this color. This is so the, gorgeous. The coat looks really great. I'm just sort of blown away by like, it looks like there's a full engine in there, but it's just all the associated parts with the uh, inverter and uh, cooling systems for the electric motor. But Liv likes the Lexus because it looks so good inside. It really does. And this, as she was saying, the paint. Now we're inside for the GV60. I love this one so much. I don't know if you've seen it, but there is a like a yellow green paint color. That's super gorgeous. I don't even know what it's called, but it still looks really good in this white. And Genesis has such a good job with their branding. On the inside, the design scheme is uh, repeated and just done so beautifully. Like everything about their branding is really gorgeous. Now we haven't actually had a chance to spend much time in this. We did a test drive for like half an hour. We spent some time in the GV70 and I love it so much that I really want to spend some time in this. It looks amazing. Hello, welcome to my car, my GV70. Electrified. Electrified. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, okay, I really wish. We spent a week in this and this car is gorgeous. It's I'm so luxurious. Sneak around. We'll see if we can show you the inside. Let's go open the front door. Yeah, because this looks just so nice inside. We had one for a week and just loved this car. It's a joy to drive. The only weird thing about it is uh, that the screen is just a titch far away. So when you want to reach it, it's a little far away, but there's a dial that you can control um, to use do that, that instead. Yeah, use that uh, front dial to control that screen. And it's just a little bit odd, but the screen is also a touch screen. It has a really good uh, heads up display. Um, but even just look at this, look at the brushed aluminum, look at the, the leather, everything about it is just so beautifully done. And the range, I, I love their design. Does it sound super great? Uh, let's see if it has the range estimate on here. I don't see it, uh, but it's, it's like 220 some miles or 240 or something like that. But we, we were doing great. Um, just driving it around in San Diego, it was like great. I think it suits me, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're in the Toyota area. This is their electric that they have. The BZ4X, or some people call the Busy Forks. There's copyright music, so let's walk this way. Um, this is hydrogen powered electric. Of course, that's, uh, you know, again, not uh, really getting there with adoption because there's no fueling stations. And then they have the uh, Prius Primes which is great. We don't want to cover, you know, hybrid so much, but I'm sort of annoyed because like Toyota is like, we're here and it's like, you know, electrify beyond zero, really pushing, you know, all this whole thing about electrification, but they have one EV over here and it's not a great EV. It's a BZ4X. It doesn't charge great. The range is not great, but that's the EV that they have here. And the only one that's really like a uh, a, a product that you could say is like, okay, this is their EV offering. They keep talking about, they're gonna have solid state batteries coming in a few years, all this other stuff. But as of right now, it's a lot of hype for not much EV. I'm really excited. This is the Chevy Silverado. They're competitor to the F-150 and we actually haven't really been able to get in one yet, have we? No, we yeah, haven't. They're, they're on the roads now. Uh, they're starting with the work truck. This is a RST. Sorry, oh. oh gosh, still. So we couldn't do that, but good to see hey. that they have a running board and a grab handle. Okay, I was just ranting about Toyota, but now I'm gonna rant about Chevrolet. <laughs> it's like, these, these trucks are in production, 
and we can't get in them. That's weird, huh? We're at an auto show, and you know, over here, and we're going to talk about, you know, it's. Um, we're really excited by the Equinox. It's I've their, been waiting to reserve one. <laughs> yeah, and we're really excited. We can't even reserve it. Can't get in it. They're talking about it was supposed to be out like later this year. Super excited to see it here again, but I think this is the same one we've been seeing for the past year. It certainly is, yeah. And we've been looking at these and not been able to get in for multiple auto shows. And then, of course, you know, Silverado, very excited by this as well. Um, but we can't even sit in it, even though these are actually in why production. Is it, and why is it open yeah, also? It's like open, just take a look. But, but I will say, um, by the way, as an amputee, drive with my left leg. Um, I got into the F-150 Lightning here. I grabbed the grabby handle, whatever the term is, yeah. and tested getting in. So that's something that I would love to be able to do in this vehicle and with any vehicles to be able to test it with my needs. So that's an important thing to be able to do at auto shows. We had a little rant, but the, the Chevy product specialist actually told us that the Silverado work truck is available for test drives downstairs. So you can go and test it. That's Super awesome. good. Yeah, that's awesome. But I'm actually standing in front of the Blazer, which you can get in also in Meso. So this is good. Go hop this in is exciting. real quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah, just hop in. So this is the first time being able to check this out inside. Now, the, the one huge negative is they've decided to get rid of CarPlay and Android Auto. So I know some people that had reservations in on this or, uh, yeah, they... they they had a reservation and they canceled it because of the CarPlay decision. It looks really nice inside. I love these. Like, that's a really cool yeah, design Yeah, this reminds element. me of the Mercedes EQS. I'm really surprised because I thought this was going to feel larger. It doesn't. It feels really good. There's a big uh, console, but I can totally sit cross-legged, yeah. which, of course, is something that I do. Side-by-side -side cup holders, two USB-C wireless charging pad driver focused console here. I really like this. I'm surprised. I like this a lot more than I thought I would. Still in the Chevy area, but tucked away to the side. Uh, someone actually asked us the other day, if I had all the money in the world, what EV would I buy? And I said the Chevy Bolt. Actually it would be the EUV, but this is the EV right here. These are so fantastic. They're one of the more affordable EVs that you can get out there. They're so nice to drive. They're just easy. Easy peasy, unthreatening, just nice cars. Unfortunately, Chevy is going to stop offering these. Uh, they said they were, then they said they weren't, then they said they were, right? Um, and it's going to come back, but on the Ultium platform, but we don't know any real details about that. But I love it. These are great cars. Uh, if you can, snap up one now. By the way, I do, I do want to mention this. Uh, and Chevy has been doing this for a while. Some other automakers are starting to do stuff like this. But if you buy like a Bolt, you can get uh, a home charger installed. So uh, makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to make the transition to EVs. And I think Hyundai was doing that on some specials with the Ionic 5. I'm not sure, but I, I did hear, I think it's like $1,200 towards a charger install or $500 in EVgo credit, something like that. Oh, really yeah. cool though to help you out. Well, I've lost my filming partner because there are puppies here. So Liv has gotten, gotten into the line so that she can uh, check out some puppies, but I'm gonna go check out some more EVs while she's doing that. So the puppies are over there, but we're over here with the Subaru Solterra. The puppies are always in the Subaru booth, but this is their EV offering. So I wanted to come over here and check this out. We actually filmed a video with the Subaru Solterra that uh, somebody let us borrow for a few days. It is basically like the twin of the BZ4X, as you probably already know. Um, we liked driving it, felt very nice. That uh, display up there, like it looked weird in photos. It still is sort of weird, but it almost serves like a heads up display when you're driving it around. Uh, I, I found a good position for me and, and really liked it, but I've heard some other people say like they couldn't get it so that the steering wheel was you know in the right position so that they could see the, the display clearly. Our only complaint on these, of course, is about the range and charging. But if that's not a concern for you, like if you're just basically looking for a, you know, just a all around good EV, but you're not gonna be doing a lot of road trips, this can serve it, you know, that purpose very well. And of course, if you're in Colorado, like a lot of our friends, you like that extra uh, ground clearance down here. So uh, check it out and uh, look for our video on it. It's either gonna come out before this or maybe within a day or two after this. We found the end of the EV test track for Hyundai 
And then next to it, they also have the all new Kona out on display. This is uh, basically like a completely refreshed Kona. We like the Kona, it just, uh, you know, seems like that Ionic 5 may be a better deal for most people, but this is slightly less than Ionic 5, still a, a pretty good EV. It is more traditional compared to, you know, a lot of EVs that like are very tech forward. Um, so if you are interested in it, uh, we'll try to do a video on this completely. But what do you guys think about the new styling? I do like the like light bar across the front. I guess we're in the, the age of light bars across cars, no matter what they are. Um, and then if you look back there, I like that green that they have. Oh, that's the, that was the concept. Ah. So anyways, let's go see if Liv is done with the puppies. All right, maybe I won't get a puppy, but I might get something else small and fun to play with. I could get the Moto Compacto. This is like the new in ride, the new in scooter. They just had like a big press ride and a bunch of media got to get on these and apparently some people crashed, but I don't know. It looks like the most adorable little suitcase I've ever seen. I think Jordan without a spec did a, a video on it. He did, so, so check that out. <laughs> Google that, check it out. This is literally my first time seeing the Honda Prologue. This is built on uh, GM's uh, Ultium platform. So you can sort of think of it as like Honda's version of the Blazer. And I just wanted to make note, it's like we're allowed to get into this one and they just announced this one. So good on Honda for making these uh, very easy to all of a sudden get into. Um, and actually you can see a lot of the parts are the same, like the uh, seat adjustments and everything, the side-by-side -side, uh, cup holders, um, doesn't have like the little rocket ship looking uh, air vent over here like the uh, Blazer had. But anyways, uh, really neat to see Honda getting in on the EV thing. Seems still a bit odd to me that they've partnered with GM to do that, but I'm excited to see it and uh, really like this color. What do you think, Liv? I really like the color. Um, were you saying that this is the same as the Blazer? Basically, yeah, because it's built yeah. on the Ultium platform in partnership. And you can see like the, the interior, oh, yeah. uh, a lot of the parts are the same. So even though it's a Honda, it really is, it's like being built at the same factory um, and everything. So this is really, like this is one of the reasons I love auto shows is because we were just uh, in the Blazer. We were just hopping around in it. So it's kind of cool to be able to see different offerings. And sure, like this may be based on the same thing, but there are clearly differences. Different um, styling, Different definitely. stylings, and the center console seems a little bit more open here, that space, but the side-by-side -side cup holders again. Um, yeah, the center console is definitely different here, and it's a little less driver-focused on the Blazer. It was a bit tilted more towards the driver. Was it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. We, we've just been in so many, it's gonna be hard to I, remember. I need to take photos, actually. Yeah, you should probably take photos, but that's really interesting. And, of course, Acura is, you know, related to Honda and they have their all electric here. I got to close this door because it's like bugging me that it's like partially a jar. There we go. Now it looks better. So I got into it a little bit on Twitter because when I look at this and this design here, it reminds me of like old Hearst vehicles. And some people were like, oh my gosh, now that I see that, I can't unsee it. That's all I see. It looks like a little, uh, a mini Hearst. Uh, and then others were like, I don't know what you're talking about. You're just an idiot. So what do you think? Am I an idiot or do you see it here? I don't know. Anyways, uh, I think it looks really good. This, this paint is actually really fantastic. It's like a gold color, something I wouldn't choose, but seeing it here, it looks really nice. Um, and of course, again, you know, it looks very similar inside. If you like pop it open, it's, you can see the connection like blazer, to uh, the Honda Prologue to this as well. So uh, some of the similarities, the one that gives it away for me is like the seat controls are like the same on all of them. Here we are at VW. They have a whole bunch of cool stuff with the cutest design aesthetic. Of course, we're starting with the ID4. Uh, we really need to spend more time in this. I really like the ID4. I think it's a great vehicle. Next to us is a completely different offering. That is the ID Buzz. We got to go to ID Buzz Day, basically, uh, where there was a gathering of all old, old buses and things like that. And the culture around the buzz and the bus in general is just so cool. So it's awesome to see VW embracing that in the design aesthetic of this in the future. Um, this obviously comes in a 
short wheelbase, which is available in Europe, and then a longer one, which looks like is this one? I it's can't the tell. It's the two-tone, so I think <laughs> this is the long wheelbase. The long wheelbase, yeah. There's a ton of cute stuff about this car. If you're looking for a van with attitude, I think this is it. And then on the other side, I wish we could jump right through it, but we got to go all the way around, go around the road. I think they're getting ready to start filming. So they we may are. Have to, oh, they're doing an interview. So we'll there's, film it from here. There's a whole bunch of stuff, but there's the ID7. We were actually able to go to the ID7 reveal at CES uh, last year. We're going to be at CES this year, so who knows what's going to happen. But really cool to see this offering. It looks really good up close. Uh, when we saw it at CES, it was in camouflage. Uh, but check out that video if you want a more close-up look. And I think that might be it. If we miss anything, we'll just, you know, insert it or put it in the description or anything like that. But uh, we tried to cover as many EVs as we could. We're just rolled around looking for them. It could be really hard. And I know we rushed through some, there's an animal back I here. I know, I totally <laughs> saw that in the camera. There's a dog. <laughs> so uh, our apologies, we're, you know, the, the whole idea is like, we're just, you know, when we can, we'll talk more about uh, an EV a lot of times we just have to rush through it. Um, but that's the whole thing with auto shows. It's sort of like uh, you, you take what you can get. And we're having a great time with this. We really want to cover all the EVs that are available so you can see what options there are. And I think it's amazing if we miss something because it really shows that the options are growing. Each time we do this at each auto show, there are more options. Although obviously LA is pretty darn big and getting bigger, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> well, this year, uh, by the way, Stellantis pulled out because of the UAW okay. strike. Uh, even though they signed a deal or whatever, or approved a deal. Anyways, uh, you know, there, there's always things like that. And people always tell us, like, it used to be even bigger back in the day, a lot more product reveals. Um, and there were some little, uh, like, side things that were announced, like a, a electric uh, RV trailer. No, oh, it's trailer. called Pebble Electric yes. Trailer, yeah. Uh, we tried to check out the press conference, but it was massively packed. If we can, we added that in. If not, you're just getting I'm already this. just thinking like, check, we're gonna go get that because that's exciting. One of the coolest EVs that's been here the whole day, it's always been packed, is Pebble. And we're here with somebody from Pebble to tell us what, what makes this, this Pebble so exciting. Well, my name is Paige, I'm the head Paige, of design yes. uh, for Pebble. Um, and this is really, it's the world's most advanced electric RV right now. Uh, you know, you have all sorts of wonderful features. You have a dual, uh, motor drivetrain, 45 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, and a lot of automation features that make uh, camping and towing a lot easier. But the, 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 the big selling feature is, like we were just talking about this, if you have a Rivian and you are towing, you have 100 miles of range, towing is gonna cut it down to like 50 miles. Yeah. But pulling this, because it's basically self-propelled, it's not gonna make it 100 miles is 100 miles of range but it's not gonna be, it's not gonna cut your range in half. Yeah, it really helps with the range degradation. Um, and it, you know, it's it's almost pulling all of its own weight. So. Almost pulling its weight. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. pretty cool. Well, um, so that, you know, that's a big help, uh, whether you're driving a gas car or an EV. Awesome. The, the thing that I'm excited about growing is that there are more EV options, right? Yeah. Like we can't just walk through and not stop for the most part. We have to stop at everything. And there's becoming more variety, like all electric EV campers. That's kind of redundant. You don't know what's gonna happen at auto show and you're just running in, trying to do your best. And the people with huge film crews and we're just two little people with a, a phone um, trying to document the stuff for you guys. So let us know what you thought of the auto show, the Los Angeles auto show for 2023, automobility. Uh, let us know if there's something you'd like to see differently. If there's something that we missed, put all the details down below. We've had that before in previous videos where people have shared about a car like Indy EV. They weren't here this year, but they were here previous year and we missed them the year before that. So let us know if there's something that we should have looked at. Yep. And yeah. <laughs> thank you to our uh, Patreon members, the uh, unbridled, the engaged and whisper, as we always <laughs> say. Uh, and you can also now join our YouTube channel with the join button as well. So there's multiple ways and you get perks for doing either so like we we try to mix it up and make sure everybody's treated nicely um but i know you guys want to go you want to go watch the next la auto show video so we're gonna let you go and, <laughs> and you're gonna wrap it up i will wrap it up by saying that thank you so much for joining us for this video in which we covered the entire los angeles international auto show of 2023 and just remember that whatever you drive whether it was here in this video or not enjoy the ride Bye. Bye.